Hi, welcome to my channel, the Machine Learning Engineer. Today I'm continuing with the series of videos I'm doing about ML and ML Ops in Databricks. I will explain you how to access different storage systems from Databricks. We are going to use DBUtils file system class and we will be accessing to Azure Blur Storage, Google Cloud Buckets and Amazon S3 Buckets all of them from Databricks. As usual, I prepare a notebook uh, to you later review in your uh, local environment. And uh, we will go through the different providers, setting up the authentic authentication and configuring how we access to the different uh, technologies uh, from Databricks. So the first thing, uh, well, uh, today I'm working in Databricks uh, in, in Amazon. Uh, I closed the account in, in Azure. If you are following my channel, I create an account in, in, in Azure Festival, a trial account. Now I create it in, in Amazon. It's exactly the same. You just can go and uh, the web page of the Amazon and check uh, how to uh, try the technology. One second. Uh, and uh, it's pretty easy to set up uh, the, the account uh, to, to just have, uh, as, as you can see here, I have a 13 days account. Uh, well, uh, it's not uh, fantastic, but uh, you can create at least a cluster, uh, no GPU, but uh, you can get access to the ML library and the, the whole functionality, SQL, data engineering, machine learning, everything that is included, except again to get a, a, a GPU. And this again happens regardless the cloud provider, GCP, AWS, or Azure. Okay. Uh, we are going to work with DBUtils, uh, FS uh, utility or tool, uh, tool, sorry, and you see here uh, the help. We had two different uh, types of uh, commands, mount to mount file system. That is where uh, we will be focusing uh, this video and FS utils, which is essentially some replacement or Unix like commands, but uh, working in uh, Databricks. I make an example here, LX, uh, yeah, it's uh, essentially uh, you are simply uh, mounting a Google. Let me see what we have there. Yeah, exactly. We had uh, some, uh, you can essentially work uh, like uh, at unique uh, command line, uh, but uh, with the uh, caricature plans, one second plans, you can now we are accessing to a mounting point. I will explain you later on how, what we have exactly here. Yeah, you see here that we are getting some uh, specific object, uh, objects, which is from the class file info. This is a specific from Databricks. It's not a, well, it's, it's just a wrapper of some of the commands to you access to the file system. I will not cover because I think it's, it's pretty simple. I would like to focus uh, mostly how to mount uh, different technologies inside Databricks, which I think is going to be more interesting for you. So, <clears throat> dbutils uh, mount, uh, mount and unmount, uh, just to, there is also some refresh mounts and, and uh, update mounts, just if you want to uh, just refresh uh, the empty point, credentials, and, but the main ones are mount and unmount, and then this, they are working with the three main cloud providers. You can mount uh, buckets, S3 buckets. Here, obviously, we are in, in Amazon. No, it shouldn't be a big, bigger problem. But in any case, you have to, to use the correct uh, terminology to, to mount the, the, the bucket. Also, we have Azure Blobs and ADS, ADSL version 2. 
and finally Google Cloud Storage. Uh, I will show you one by one. Okay, we start with uh, AWS S3 backers. We you just first of all you you need to create uh, a user. You go to the IAM Identity and Access Manager. You create a user. Just test uh, whatever test. Uh, bucket blah 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 you get next you can attach a policy directly you can say essentially s3 x3 full access and for this experiment is more than enough you get next create user and essentially with that you had s3 test bucket now you click on test bucket you go to um, act, create access key and then you can essentially say application running on aws computer service or command line is going to be the same or local code these three are practically the same you see get description tag is uh, keys key whatever to access uh, s3 buckets s3 buckets and you create access key you can you need to copy the id and also the secrets you copy apart because uh, later on you will not uh, see it again you can download if you want and later on you can reuse it but as you yeah you you will never say it again so copy before you you uh, is disappear this bucket i'm going to delete it in order to not use it. so with these two parameters uh, i simply uh, introduced them in a secret scope in in amazon there is no connection with the kms with the key management system so we cannot do the what we did in in azure that we connected with the keyboard here this uh, option is taxi so we are uh, i created a databricks uh, secret scope and i introduced these two keys if you want to see how to do this there is a video on the channel just take a look if you don't find it let me know i will point you out where is uh, the 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 video then on your name the you you specify the name of the bucket you can go to your buckets in amazon s3 amazon s3 buckets uh, you take a look it's not you create one you go to the bucket permissions and as we provide access to all uh, admin access to all s3 buckets we don't need to specify anything here it's not uh, well it's uh, no necessary no actions uh, necessary here just just copy the name of the bucket just to include it on the on the call so you get the name of the bucket you get the name uh, of the folder that you want to use to mount this file system you can take a look here i had some files here and also i don't know if i had something here yeah i had something here as well I don't remember what is this, even that, I don't care, doesn't matter. Uh, and, and well, just you use TV, use TIL, FS mount, you just use a URI like S3A with your access key, your secret key, the ones that you created before, at name of the bucket and where you want to mount it. You just execute it. And here, as you can see, I just make an ls of my 
mon name, I mount it in a slash mnt, a slash OCR, and you can see I had input and them exactly the same I had here in my S3 bucket, and I make here as well a list of the files I have on my uh, input. If you want to mount a mount, you just simply fs amount. Uh, in this case, the mounting point was a slash mnt osia, and then you just run it and that's it. So, here I give you some links, interesting links. Uh, with here, you had how to set up your CLI, and uh, this way you will be able as well to create your secret ID, uh, also your access key ID and your secret ID. Also, you will be able to access to your AWS account, AWS account using the CLI from uh, Amazon and interesting information about how to work with, uh, with Amazon. Here we have the same, here you have how to set up a service principle, we are going to need it. It's not I will explain you to create a service principle, you just need uh, to go to Microsoft Intra ID, you go later to APP registrations, you do a new registration, you provide a name, test AWS uh, bucket, whatever, it's uh, just a name. Leave it like single tenant, you know, I don't think that you are working in a multi-tenant environment. You create application. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Once you have it, go to certificates and secrets, uh, create new secrets, provide a name, uh, my service account for example choose an expiration yeah it can be well custom whatever or just choose a name add once you add it copy the value value is the key the secret and the secret id is the way to identify your secret you need both and also copy the application ident uh, ID, copy, and the directory ID, copy as well. Okay, so we have this uh, service account right now, and now you go to the uh, storage account. If you don't have one, create one. Go to your service account. First of all, you can create a container. Uh, you go to data storage container. I'm gonna use this test DBS. If you don't have, create one uh, to that. And once you have that, go to access control IA, IAM, add role assignments. And here, let me remember, uh, poof, I forgot again. What is the name of the role? We had here in any case the, the documentation. We need to add uh, our storage block data contributor role. A storage blob. Sorry. Blob data contributor. This will give us read, write, and access write. Click it. Next. Now, user group or service principal. Select member. Copy the name of your service principal and select it. Review and assign. And once you have review and assign, you have it. So this is giving you access to this service principal account uh, with this data I showed you before. 
to the to this bucket I'm gonna delete it in any case just to avoid problems but uh, just imagine you have to take again the uh, secret scope let's take a, a look to the to the other one you take a look to the tenant ID and also inside the certificates and secrets value and secret ID so the tenant ID comes here you can see here I introduce as well in a secret scope and uh, you set up the config authentication type type uh, o out o a o a u t h provider type that one you the client id this is the client id that you have essentially here this one secret id client secret is that one the value and uh, the login uh, you need to use this login a uh, url where you introduce here the tenant the tenant is essentially as i told you that one this one once you have it uh, you can uh, ah, next you create the url uh, the URI, sorry of your uh, container here you have the container name let's go there container name is test dbs and after is add and then on the name of the storage account if you don't find easily the storage account you just go there storage accounts click on there and json view json view you have here the name this is the name of your storage account you just write in down here that the tfs called windows net just run and if you get through through is that is working okay it works now we can take a look what i have in the directory let's check i had some uh, documents pdfs blah 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 let's take a look to our container and you can check i'm online i just had exactly that to ma to amount just simply here we mount it in mnt azure just amount it exactly the same and the last the last is google cloud uh, here i give you also some links for google cloud the first that you need to do is go to IAM admin service accounts I'm going to delete this one that is the one I created before for the Spanish video and then I will show you create service account you just make test uh, database DBS for example copy this address but well it doesn't matter you will copy later on once you copy test dbs enter in the service account go to keys add key create new key json format recommended create it and now it's downloading the file the file itself uh, i think uh, we have it Yeah, we have it here. It's now 21.06. That's probably one. 20. This is from today. 19. Yeah, this is the three examples. Let me open it. Ah, test DBS. You can check here the the you are uh, email address you will need three four sorry four keys from this uh, file the project id project key id private key and clear email so take this uh, close to you 
because you will need it now to configure the access to GCP. Then on you go to the menu, you go to Cloud Storage Packets, and then on either create one bucket or choose one of the of the availables you have here. And then on once you have here, go to permissions. In here you go to view by principle, grant access, and here you just write down uh, the email address you get here. You will see here. And now here you assign the permission storage. Uh, storage, it was. Yeah, it was a storage. Uh, cloud storage, storage admin. Okay? So write cloud storage and then on you, you grant the permission storage admin. Save. And now. You create the service principal or the service account, sorry, and also you provide access with uh, to this bucket in read, write, and delete. Once you have this, you need to uh, introduce in a secret scope your private key and your private key ID. The private key ID is this one, no double uh, quota, quotes, and here, from here to here, exactly. The same, no quotes, create these two uh, secrets in a secret scope, as I did here. You can see here I create a secret scope with the name Google Secrets, and I had Google private key and Google private key ID. And then you need to set up the driver with the following configuration. First of all, you set up to this key, uh, service account enable true, then on service account email, the email of your, of your uh, service account file, this one. Then on you just write the project ID. Uh, notice that I not uh, write, uh, not putting any, sorry, any uh, quota. So the project ID you have it here, and the private key and the private key ID I took it from my Google Secrets in these two kits. Okay, once you have this created, copy eh? and go to your cluster, edit, you have to shut down the cluster, edit, and go to advanced, advanced, advanced options, Spark, and copy here in Spark configuration as you can see here. Okay, the fight keys, the fight attributes, copy here. Once you have it, confirm and start the cluster. Once you have this done, you can return to your to your um, notebook. And here I just open in, let me take a new one, it's conditions. I just uh, listing some files in my database file system, in my workspace that Databricks datasets in one of the files. I'm going to open this one, take a look, and it, it, it is a CSV file. I'm using a SPAR read format, CSV, option, headers true, load this file, this CSV. This is going to create a, a SPAR data frame. Just we read it, we display. Is that one? Star, stop, patient, encounter. Ah, yeah. Correct. Now we have it in a Spark data frame and I'm now going to save it in my Google uh, bucket. You can see here, you just specify GS, Google Storage, your project, 
together this is the name of the your bucket let's go to your bucket id your bucket id that one complete to blah 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 unique and slash the folder where you want to say what i'm doing here essentially is uh, taking my spark data frame writing in format parquet i overwrite the mode overwrite this means that everything that is before is deleted and this is the path where i'm going to save it you just write you see here is working in spark format you can just go here objects and you can see here i have already conditions this is the spark files that the parquet sorry files that uh, we can say this as well in another let me show delta you can specify here delta format and let's take a look what looks like probably uh, yeah For Delta is a little bit uh, for writing, it's a little bit uh, slower, but later on for uh, updating, um, uh, serializing, and uh, reading is much, much faster. So just take a look. Uh, you go here, uh, here, you go here, condition delta, delta log, etc. It's uh, slightly different, you see this different, it's uh, in a way snappy packet, it's the format. We will talk about this in, in another video. Now, this is just using the Google Cloud uh, packet to store some files in data frames, in, in you can copy, uh, whatever. If you want to have a permanent mounting point, after you are mounted, you just simply use again dbutilfs mount source this is what you want to mount uh, let me take a look to the folder i use here let me conditions delta for example and where i want to and here you just point to google storage the bucket you don't need to specify here any credentials because we already have it on the on the driver and then you just choose the mounting point and if you put here the mounting point what is condition delta you can do a lx and you had exactly the same that we have here delta log and these files you have one two three okay you can amount now uh, google slash conditions delta and i'm going to amount everything that i have uh, in mounted there just to avoid problems later on Uh, no no delta is gonna be just mnt let me check i had google the only one i removed that and i am mounted oops ah oh, sorry yes uh, i had to close this it didn't like what dbfs a Google uh, ah yeah exactly yeah there is nothing already there oh yeah MNT Google well I will I will I will see what's going on here not really sure file info mnt google but 
probably something that I did before and I cannot uh, mount right now. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, that is just a, a test. Google. What we have here. Ah, care plans. Exactly. Exactly. It's, uh, we mount care plans. No Google. And now we can check here if we have something. Ah, yeah, we had uh, Google, but I suppose that we don't have anything. Yeah, exactly. There is nothing there. Okay, that's all. Uh, I think it's uh, well. It's not the most interesting topic, but believe me, when you are working as a machine learning engineer, this is gonna be very useful for you especially when you are working in a multi-tenant environment, uh, you need to, to, to have good practice uh, using these, uh, these commands, how to access to the different file systems. Also, well, in, we can explain as well how to access server, uh, file servers or uh, SFTP servers via or via HTTP download CSV files. All this stuff with this part of the initial pipeline where you get access to the sources and then on you start to manipulate the transform doing the uh, what is a feature uh, transformation feature engineering. All this stuff is pretty important. I, I'm not well. I, I will say that probably it's not the best or the most uh, funny stuff that you do when you are working as a machine learning engineer. But again, you 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 need to do it. It's part of the stuff that you you need to master. And believe me, it's it's not only for you. It's also for me. This is uh, helping me as well to remember all this stuff because from time to time I need to do this stuff, and then I had to read the documentation. And then this way I, I record a video, I show you how to do it, and also it's going to be useful, useful for me eh, as kind of the knowledge uh, database, or knowledge, uh, uh, yeah, uh, knowledge database, uh, to, to later on uh, take a look uh, how to do these kind of things, because again, I, I had to do it many times, and always I had to go back again to to the documentation in Google, in Amazon, done, and then see what to do. Now I compile everything in a single, in a single video, in a single document, and then only it will be easy for me, easy for you as well, in how to do these kind of things. Uh, again, I don't insist too much in FS utils. It's pretty simple. Uh, well, if you have any doubt, just let me know. I can explain you uh, in in the chat how these uh, commands work in uh, DB utils because, well, it's pretty similar. Again, the only difference is just you need to specify with DBFS with the URI where is the file, where is the source, where is the destination. That's it. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. I hope that uh, you like it, uh, you find it interesting and useful for your training and your job. And it is like this, as I used to say, give me a like, subscribe to the channel and share with your friends as colleagues and colleagues in order to help me to uh, promote my channel. Thank you very much uh, and see you soon.